In today's video, we're going to talk more about berberine hydrochloride and the synergism between probiotics and berberine. Now, this is a fascinating, randomized, double-blinded, multi-center study in, involved in, uh, it was an 18-week study. There was uh, several hundred participants, 300 participants. And what they found was there's synergism between taking the natural product known as berberine hydrochloride. This has been shown to improve blood sugar health, reduce fasting insulin, improve metabolic parameters, and much more. And what they found is there was some synergism in a group that took the berberine and also a bifidobacterium-based probiotic. Now, I don't want to push a bunch of supplements here, so we're just going to talk about some practical ways to support gut and metabolic health. And ferments are something that we, this is a piece of low-hanging sort of nutrient fruit we should all be prioritizing. If any of you go to South America, uh, you go to parts of Asia, ferments are just part of the culture. Now, we screw up everything in America, right? We have fast food restaurants and, and Uber Eats and all this. And so we don't have any of these culinary habits that make us healthy or keep our gut health. Uh, you know, so many people go to the ER because they have a tummy pain, tummy ache. Like, you talk to some ER physicians and, and they're stuck. They don't know what to do because, you know, we have rampant digestive issues. We have rampant obesity and insulin resistance. Now, this paper might find that there's some sort of connection here between the natural product berberine that's so effective for kickstarting your fast, for helping to support metabolic health, and synergism between taking berberine and also taking um, some fermented foods or even a probiotic. Okay, so that's where we're going. The title of the paper is Effectiveness and Safety of Bifidobacterium and Berberine in Human Hyperglycemia and Their Regulatory Effect on the Gut Microbiota, a multi-center, double-blind, randomized, parallel-controlled study. So again, over 300 subjects, really fascinating. What I want to do here is just kind of dive into some of the details. Uh, the primary efficacy endpoint was the absolute value of fasting blood glucose compared with baseline after 16 weeks of treatment. So again, they're trying to look at what are, what's the change? What's the improvement in fasting blood glucose after doing this for several months? And what they found is that between October 2015 and April of 2018, a total of 297 participants were included in the primary analysis, and they found significant reductions in fasting blood glucose observed in the berberine group and the berberine plus bifidobacterium group compared with the placebo group. So this was what was really interesting, and it seems that, and we're going to get into the details here, but I just want to share with you the conclusion of a study, and by the way, it's a full text PDF. Check it out in the show notes that I'll link below. Berberine could regulate the structure and function of the human gut mi microbiota, and bifidobacterium has a potential to enhance the hypoglycemic effect of berberine. These findings provide new insights into the hypoglycemia potential of berberine and bifidobacterium. So to me, I think this is fascinating as someone who's been following the Human Microbiota Project and all the, the gut microbiome research as it relates to systemic metabolic health and immunity. Very fascinating, okay? So what does this look like on a practical level and how much berberine did they administer? I believe they had 1,000 milligrams. Uh, tw it was 500 milligrams twice a day. Okay, so that's kind of the dose. So a lot of people want to know, you know, when they get berberine, you know, what, when do they take it? How do they take it? With food, without food? There's a lot of questions here. The only time you don't want to take berberine before is before exercise. That's basically the, the only rule. It's not that you're going to have a terrible exercise session or it's going to like shrink your muscles. It's just that berberine does impact the mitochondria in part. And um, that might lead to a suboptimal exercise session, okay? So if you happen to take it and then you go exercise, it's no big deal, but you're going to have the a best exercise session if you, if you don't take it beforehand. So you could take it in the morning with your first meal, or you could take it with your last meal, and that's been shown to actually help. I have several people that I've worked with that have noticed favorable changes in their sleep when they take it in the evening. Okay, so you can take it either time, and that's what the study actually found, is they did it twice a day, 500 milligrams. Um, they had three different arms of the study, the placebo arm, berberine-only arm, and the berberine plus bifidobacterium arm. So you might be saying, okay, I need to go out and I need to buy berberine and I need to buy a probiotic. Well, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I also suggest making life a little bit easier here, and you can spend 6 to $8 a week on fermented foods that have both you know, bifidobacterium, lactobacilli, and plus you're getting fermented veggies. Uh, I think you know there's a lot of controversy over, well, do I even eat veggies if I'm on a keto or carnivore diet? I absolutely uh, believe, and this is, again, looking at different cultures, fermented veggies are easier to digest. You're getting the beneficial bacteria and all the other accessory uh, components. So big fin of this. And if you look at this culturally, people are doing this and have been doing this all throughout the world. And when they move to, say, America and they stop making their own kimchi and sauerkraut, 
Um, they start to gain weight. And, and, you know, could it be the ultra processed foods and, and other confounding variables? Yeah. But if you even, you know, I've been to Korea twi- twice now. And when I talk to the elders there, they always talk about how the young children are not, they're not into ferments because grandma's not cool. Uh, they like the American foods. They go to the McDonald's and all this, and they want to eat like Americans. And guess what? They're gaining weight. There's now obese children and overweight children, which, um, you know, historically uh, in South Korea, that wasn't a phenomenon. So, you know, you just want to start eating this uh, with your meals. You, know, you have eggs in the morning, you have a little avocado, whatever, for breakfast or a brunch or lunch. Put a tablespoon or two of, um, you know, some fermented foods on there. If you want to support your metabolic health, you can take uh, some berberine hydrochloride. I will link uh, the brand that, that I personally use. Uh, and very helpful in terms of, you know, how, how it impacts uh, ketone levels and much more. There'll be links below to that. So I do just want to, uh, and of course, I'll let you all know that that is our sister company, Myoscience, and these videos are not intended to diagnose, cure, treat, or prevent diseases. We're talking about supporting whole body metabolic health, and it seems that berberine is a natural product that can support there. So uh, you can use it, to again, to kickstart your fast. You can use it to have it with meals. Uh, for example, if you want to take it in the evening, uh, and so forth, and start you fast earlier as well. So that can be helpful. So in summary, these uh, researchers go on to say the hypoglycemic effect of berberine was further validated uh, by how it affects the gut. Now, this is what's interesting, is a lot of people are doing, you know, searching uh, for berberine and berberine analogs, and there's companies that are putting berberine in a phytosome that are emulsifying it. They're trying to enhance the absorption. Now, sometimes we miss the forest through the trees because... It turns out that how berberine and even how metformin work may be on the gut and the gut hormones. It may not have to do with systemic absorption. You know, sometimes we, we always chase absorption, and, and the curcumin story is very similar, where you have all these companies that are nano-emulsifying liquids and all these different things to enha- and optimize absorption. Well, what if most of the benefits of curcumin were right here in the microbiome by changing gut bacteria, by affecting gut hormones and signaling, and secondarily, that then affects the systemic part of the body. It turns out, in my estimation, based upon reading this research over and over and over since 2010, I really feel, and the research supports this, that how berberine impacts your systemic health is by way of the gut. And so I truly think that we shouldn't strive to buy the latest and greatest bio-optimized, emulsified, you know, sort of phytochemical, such as berberine or even curcumin, because part of this benefit is in the gut. Metformin is very poorly absorbed, but it's very effective. Now, I know it's people are like, well, wait, you're endorsing a drug? Yeah, there's some drugs that are helpful, and metformin happens to be uh, a, a drug, but it also happens to be very effective at what it does. It's also very poorly absorbed, just like berberine, very poorly absorbed, but it's very effective. And part of that efficacy could have to do with how it affects the microbiome. So the authors go on to say bifidobacterium showed a potential to enhance the hypoglycemic effect of berberine. We also observed um, possible changes in the gut microbiome. Uh, when regulated uh, for berberine and for the lowering uh, glucose, glucose effect might be some of the mechanistic basis for which this hypoglycemic potential is induced is due to the changes in the microbiome and the synergism between the berberine and the bifidobacterium. Um, so given the benefits of bifidobacterium in berberine in terms of lowering blood glucose, more studies are needed to confirm these findings. But again, we have like 296 subjects. This was an 18-week randomized double-blind study. Uh, interesting stuff, friends. So take-home message here is definitely eat more fermented foods. If you want to go out and get a probiotic, totally fine, uh, You know, especially if you have a lot of gut health issues. But I think fermented foods is just something that we should all strive to do. And if that doesn't do the trick, then you can continue on with you know, sort of your treatment plan. But, but berberine seems to be synergistic in terms of how it affects the microbiome and metabolic health. And as this study found, there was an additive benefit of of the two together. So interesting stuff. I think it's fascinating. I will link in the show notes the images and the title of this paper so you can check it out. And if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below. I'm grateful that you're tuning in. I'm Mike Mutzel. You're tuning in to High Intensity Health and hopefully you found this helpful. We'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.